presented by Church Tech U. It's the ProPresenter Show. On today's show, what is new in ProPresenter 7.3? Hi and welcome again to the ProPresenter Show. This is the show where I help you learn all about ProPresenter. My name is Paul Allen Clifford. Today, as I'm recording this, uh, Renewed Vision announced ProPresenter 7.3, which is really exciting. It's November of 2020 and ProPresenter 7 came out in January. Then ProPresenter 7.1 came out, then, which added in live streaming. Then ProPresenter 7.2 came out, which made the audio routing just incredible. And the ability to do a lot in ProPresenter that before you would need um, special audio hardware to do. Today they announced ProPresenter 7.3 and there are a lot of new features so I thought that I would show you all of them just in kind of a high level overview and then in future tutorials I'll show you how to use all the stuff. So here we are in ProPresenter 7.3 and uh, the very first thing that I want to talk about is Bibles. So if we go into the Bible app right here and go into Options, and then select Bibles, then Get Bibles. There are a lot more Bibles here than there were before. In fact, before there were um, 54 Bibles, now there are 33 new Bibles. So we have more Bibles than ever before, and a a lot of the existing Bibles have also gotten updates. So if there was uh, a problem in the text, you know, people are people. We're not talking about the original text. We're talking about the digital version of the translation. Then those have been uh, repaired and corrected. If there were uh, some mislabels, things like that, that has been fixed. So ProPresenter now has a lot more Bibles than they have before. And that's great news for people that said, oh, what about this translation? Well, that translation, whatever it is, might be in there now where it wasn't before. So great news and uh, shout out to Chris Rouse who was doing a lot of the work behind the scenes to make that a success. Uh, next, if we go back into show and we select a song here, let me go here, you probably already see it, and that is that the tokens here in the arrangements feature, so you know you click here to show your arrangements, they are now more colorful, and so it's really obvious when you look at this one that there is no chorus 2 because the courses are a shade of red. So if I go down to this one, you'll notice there is a chorus too, because, as I say, the choruses are a shade of red. So you can really quickly glance and see what's there inside an arrangement in ProPresenter 7.3. Now, another thing that I, I'm really kind of excited about, even though it's just a UI tweak, is before, if you wanted to go to something particular in ProPresenter Preferences, you had to go to ProPresenter Preferences, then click on the tab. But now, if we go up here to the ProPresenter menu and then Preferences, see, we can select these tabs individually. So uh, let me go to Inputs, where I'll tell you about something else that is new there. So let me drag that over because it showed up on the wrong screen for me, because you're not looking at my default screen. So here, um, this isn't immediately obvious, but one thing is, if you click this, you can monitor the audio from any of your audio sources. So that's pretty cool if you add a new audio source and you just want to make sure that the source itself is good, you can check that there. Also down here, audio transition duration. Before, when you changed the audio source, it would go directly from one to the other without any sort of crossfade. And now we have a crossfade, so 
I've got a one second crossfade set up here. Um, but there's no reason why I couldn't have a 5.3 second or I can go back to my zero second if I liked it the way that it was. So that's a cool feature that they've added in um, ProPresenter 7.1 as well. Now, speaking of audio, if we go here and I right click on a slide and go to add actions then action palette I actually have some new uh, options here as well probably the one that people have been clamoring for since probably at least ProPresenter 4 or 5 is this one audio bin playlist so now instead of just a single audio track you can drag this onto any slide let's say that slide and select a playlist. Now I've only got three playlists in here, but uh, I can select that and then the playlist itself, not just a single track, will start playing when I get to that slide. Um, I probably wouldn't want to do that on just a regular slide here during a song, so I'll take that off later, but you could imagine having that as part of your pre-service loop. There's some things you need to consider, and I'll talk about that in a future tutorial. But that is an exciting thing, because there was a workaround before that was kind of complex, and so that's a lot easier. You'll also notice that there are other things here. So uh, I also have the Media Bin playlist. You might not have known that these are playlists down here in the Media Bin. Well, not this. Uh, that's the live video input. But um, this is a playlist, this is a playlist, this is a folder containing playlists for those. So I could select the entire playlist if I wanted to instead of just an individual thing. And so have one piece of media transition to another piece automatically. And uh, it wouldn't necessarily coincide with when a particular slide is clicked. So that would be a great way to make like a um, like a slideshow from a mission trip in the summer or vacational Bible school or what have you. So that's a cool little feature that they added in as well there. But the big one that people are really excited about is this. So if I go into live before and capture settings. I'll have to drag that over here. Um, before we had, sorry, wrong one. We had disk, which was recording. We had RTMP, which was RTMP live streaming. Um, also RTMPS. But now we have a third, and that is Resi. So Resi is um, a live streaming host but they've got a little special secret behind the scenes. And that is that um, the founders of Resi had some uh, background in this and they're uh, from a church background and they noticed that there was streaming and buffering. So they created a new live streaming protocol that enables you to get a much more resilient, hence the name Resi, short for resilient, live stream. So you can use their service directly from ProPresenter. Um, you can also access the stuff up here under Preferences, Resi, and go there directly. You'll notice I've got an account, so I'm going to make a tutorial all about how to use that here very soon. But that's something else that is just really exciting that they've added in ProPresenter 7.3 because formerly you needed a hardware encoder that was, I think, around $1,500. So now, if you have ProPresenter 7, then you have a, an encoder for Resi. Maybe you're not going to use that normally uh, week in, week out if you're a larger church, but it's really nice for if you want to go ahead and... Um, take just a laptop to a remote event. So 
what's particularly helpful is if at that remote event you don't have good internet but you do have a phone that you can tether to the computer then resi will kind of fill in some of the gaps where maybe the cell signal is eh, a little iffy and you can still get a beautiful live stream out from a remote location so that's something else really cool so i hope you liked learning all about all the new features in ProPresenter 7.3. If you like this content, I bet you'd like my ProPresenter 7 Quick Start course. So just head on over to tdm.fyi slash pro7quick and sign up right there. Uh, put in your email address and name and I'll uh, automatically make a login for you so that you can just go through it at your leisure. Until next time, this is Paul Allen Clifford from TrinityDigitalMedia.com and ChurchTechU.com reminding you to go out and change eternity.